Hi guys, how are you doing? So today I'm doing this outside on my balcony. I hope that you're going to be able to hear me because um, it's quite windy outside, but it's so pretty, look at all these flowers. Um, yeah, so today I wanted to talk to you about attachment styles and how they influence our relationships. Um, so there is basically this theory that was developed in the 80s of last century, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, first it was only applicable to babies. So um, the scientists developed a theory that there is uh, several types of attachment that a baby can form to their mother because humans are naturally predispositioned to form attachments and of course babies are attached to their mothers and depending on how this relationship goes uh, well they can form healthy or unhealthy habits and uh, view of the world and stuff like that but then it was extended to adults as well because apparently we learn how to behave in a relationship as babies and unless something happens in our life that teaches us otherwise which rarely happens then we kind of take it throughout our entire life and we keep the same relationship um attachment status whatever so let's start uh there is actually several people who studied this and they disagree on some minor things but i have a list of uh different points that they made and that are similar to no that are similar for every one of their studies so first of all people are biologically driven to form attachment to others uh but this process of forming attachment is influenced by learning experiences so as i said when you were a baby, you learn how to form attachments. Individuals form different kinds of attachments depending on the expectations and belief they have about their relationships. Uh, it is called working models and basically it is whatever you believe about your future or potential relationship will be true. Number three is uh, internal working models or perceptions about prospective relationships uh, are relatively stable even though they can be influenced through experience. I think that I already went through this like briefly. Um, and number four is that individual differences in attachment can contribute positively or negatively to mental health and the quality of relationships with others. So basically what it says is that if you were a baby and your parents were not um, caring enough or didn't give you enough attention or love or tenderness whatever it is uh you will most likely be a crippled uh emotionally adult and i mean it in the best way i'm not um here to offend anyone because i have this problems myself this is why i'm speaking about this in the first place uh so let's go through the attachment styles and how they are characterized and what you can do about it if your attachment style is not particularly the best one. So, first of all, there is secure attachment and about 80% of people fall into this category. This people who are secure attachers, how do you say that? I'm not sure. Uh, so these people can be open about their emotions, they understand what's happening inside here and they have no problem sharing it with their partner, they have no problem trusting them, uh, they treat their partners with love and respect, uh, they are pretty open about their wins and losses and they can show their weaker sides and uh, they have quite a good self-esteem so they don't need constant approval from their partners. Uh, and they are good at resolving conflicts and don't take things personally and uh, they are forgiving and apologizing and they have no problems with all this kind of stuff. Now we are getting to the interesting part. So these are not normal attachments and these are formed because of some kind of trauma that people have endured in their childhood. And by trauma I mean abuse, neglect, anything in this category so number two is anxious attachment and this is uh the more like bpd ish i would say thing and 
maybe it is more kind of characteristic for girls I would say because there is this stigma going around about this uh, so anxious attachment is basically about wanting to be really close and intimate with your partner and you go to such great lengths to accommodate your partner and make them happy because they are scared that they are going to leave you uh, that you forget about yourself and you constantly deprive yourself of uh, fulfilling your own needs and wishes and you are very preoccupied with your relationship you can get uh, too clingy you can start calling them at work and you can uh, start you know be, being manipulative because you are scared that otherwise they're going to leave you and yeah uh, you can be really jealous or you can try to provoke jealousy in your partner uh, and you know like this is not a normal thing although I know to some extent in many relationships people tend to behave like this uh, the not normal part of it is the amount of anxiety that you feel when you feel that your partner is kind of distancing themselves and they are going to distance themselves because no one wants to be constantly smothered and pressured unless it is a very codependent and unhealthy relationship again uh, so number three is avoidant attachment and it's basically the opposite of the anxious attachment so if the anxious people are anxious about the other person leaving them the avoidant people are anxious about the other person getting too close yeah uh, they can only enjoy closeness to a limit to an extent uh, and if they share their feelings for example they kind of regret it quite instantly they are not really comfortable with it uh, they don't really like to commit they want to stay as independent as possible because uh, usually when they were babies or children their parents didn't have time for them for example and uh, they kind of formed this style of I don't need anyone I am totally fine on my own which is not normal because people are meant to create connections and bonds and it's okay to depend on someone until you are self-sufficient if you know what I mean uh, so the closer your partner gets the more dissatisfied with the relationship you get because you feel like you're losing your freedom you feel like you are being smothered you feel like you're suffocating in the relationship and if you happen to be in a relationship with an anxious attacher then it's going to be a shit show and it will go down in flames because they will become more clingy and you will become more uh avoiding and it will just you know go down in flames so number four is avoidant anxious or anxious avoidant and basically it's a combination of the two i honestly i'm not really sure i was never diagnosed but i had this little test on the internet and i think that i fall into this category and basically it's a mixture of two so you're scared of getting too close but you're also scared that your partner is going to leave you and you become manipulative and you are just uh anxious and sad and depressed all the time and you have all this stress and anxiety and you know like you just don't feel good in a relationship because there is so much emotions connected to it and they are all mostly negative ones so um well i mean this people are probably the least likely because no matter how distant or how close you get nothing really works and as for me i can say that i can switch from one to another in like one day so i can feel that uh my partner is getting kind of too distant from me and i will get obsessive about that and then i will think well okay i don't need you and like be all independent and like have this mentality of <laughs> whatever but then you have anxiety about that and then i mean it's just not pretty trust me but the good news is that if you know that you have uh one of the three not normal types of attachment you can change it and uh first of all of course it's going to therapy because uh the therapists are the people who know how to fix us and they can help us with it uh so well talk therapy is usually enough 
you just go through your feelings and through your like childhood memories whatever and you develop an understanding of why this is happening to you um and you can change your attachment style through talk therapy and uh everything is going to be good but it requires work of course as all the psychotherapy does so nothing comes overnight and you need to really want to change in order to change but some rules on how to just be more healthy in a relationship is first of all learning to be assertive and knowing your own limits and your own wishes so kind of learning to speak your mind having your own opinion and respecting yourself so that the other person can respect you and this is more about the anxious attachers um then expressing your emotional needs is very 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 important um trying and risking being authentic and direct uh, in order to be more sincere in their relationship because a lot of the time uh, we play this mind games this relationship games where we do not share our real feelings and we are pretending to be someone that we are not in order to seem cooler or whatever but it just doesn't make our relationship any healthier because if the person is not in a relationship with the real you then you're doomed eventually they will find out that they were being lied to and nothing good is going to happen trust me um another thing that you need to do is to practice accepting yourself and the others and i truly believe that you cannot accept other people unless you accept yourself one more thing is to stop reacting which can be a challenge because every one of us has their triggers has their emotional uh topics has their like sore spots and just trying to kind of contain yourself in yourself if you can say that so try to be your own judge for every situation and do not place the responsibility for your emotions on the other person and know that no matter what even if you break up you are the person that you are going to stay with always and your opinion is the one that actually matters because you are going to be with you forever but you are not going to be with the other person forever most likely so learn to trust yourself and learn to be your number one priority but it also means that you need to be attentive to others because unless you know how to kind of take care of yourself you can never know how to take care of other people um and the last thing is learning how to resolve conflicts and solve problems from a big perspective so if you are in a relationship and you still consider yourself an individual that is totally independent and doesn't rely on the other person doesn't depend on them whatsoever it's not going to work because in a relationship there are going to be conflicts and problems and unless two people are working on them they are never going to stay together for a long time because there is two people in a relationship and two people need to work on it in order for it to work so start accepting that you can depend on someone being okay with it and trying to solve the conflicts it, instead of running away from them in a way um yeah i think that that was it this video became way longer than i expected it to be but i hope that it was helpful when i discovered this actually a lot a lot a lot become clear for me and i learned which parts of my relationship were the result of what and sort of how to work on myself and on my relationships and, and stuff like that so I find it really helpful. I hope that you did as well. And thank you so much for watching my video. I love you guys so, so much. See you in my next one. And be nice human. Bye.